What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Thank you so much for coming back. If this is your first time here, thanks for showing up. Uh, please click subscribe right there or wherever it is. I don't know which side. I don't know how mirrors work, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Maybe it's over there. Whatever. Uh, please click it. Let everybody know about the Whiskey Ginger podcast. We really appreciate it. Follow us on the social media. Do all that stuff. Go to andrewsantino.com if you want to see me live. I'm on the road this entire first half of the year. Um, right now, this weekend, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, in freezing cold Canada, bro, where it's negative 10. What's the deal? Come out and see me. Next weekend, I'll be at Denver Comedy Works. Denver, the Mile High City. I loves you, bro. The city that Elway built. I love that spot. What a town. Then the next uh, two two dates after that are going to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Madison, Wisconsin to close out January. Come out and see me. Go to andrewsantino.com for all your tickets. Also, there's the Patreon um, there uh, below us in the description. Uh, please support us. We really appreciate it. We're going to be doing more interactive stuff, live Q&A this month. We're also doing Cheeto Chats where it's one-on-one. -on -one. I can talk to the Patreon members, exclusive content just for them that you can't get here on this channel. And also, you can get a bunch of merch. You can get merch at andrewsantino.com now, which I'm excited about. I pulled up with my feet. Look at how good that was. Look at that hat. Look at the Red Rocket hat. That's amazing. Red Rocket. I'm not sure we're going to be able to bring all this stuff on the road because there's a bunch of different beautiful pieces of art that we put up there. Um, so please, uh, go to andrewsantino.com for tour dates, for merch, for the Patreon, for the Twitter, the Instagram, all the stuff that you need to know is on there. And in the meantime, enjoy the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Ryan Sickler, Sick Dog, baby. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Dude, I'm so happy that you're here. You showed up. My landscaping guys were here. Sickler was out front fist fighting the gardener. Uh, I got that weed whack. <laughs> wanted to get that weed whack. You know what I really appreciated about walking up to your home, though, mm. was the smell of the gas, the oil mix. You yeah. Know, that two stroke shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kicking out his weed whack. Yeah, there. hell yeah. This is like, an electric. Never mind, took me to my summer. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to mow your own lawn when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. If we would have had guys like this roll through our neighborhood, they would have got their shit vandalized and everything. That was our summer money. That was our winter money, yep. shoveling sidewalks and all that. But. Back when you had the wee whacker where um, when the core were going, you had to press down on it. Remember oh, that yeah, one? You had man. to press down and pull oh, that yeah. shit out. And then it just fucking your shins up and everything else. You would get, it would all, I would always get hurt doing any kind of yard work. Like it would, it's some kind of injury would come from any of that fucking yeah. shit, you know? Well, what, what were your shoe? What were your mowing shoes? Did you have, what, what brand were your mowing shoes? Do you remember? Probably just some old Adidas or old something. Old Adidas, like that, bro. Because I played soccer and I, I was going to say Adidas, old Sambas. Theodora, yeah, yeah. Sure, it was some Sambas. That all green at one point, you know, from the grass and shit. Is, is that why you got nice things? thighs you got them soccer thighs i got good thighs but i have bad calves but i got good thighs i got good defender thighs that's like your uh your old partner in crime larson uh, jay larson brags about his calves he says he got the best calves in the country he he's got he's got some, he's got some ham hocks. he's got some solid calves he does, bro. But the funny thing is i played soccer all my life i should have those calves yeah but no that's 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 yeah, genetics man that some people just born with nice shapely yeah, calves he's got shapely calves. you ever see like a big dude at the gym or something like a big dude that lifts and then you see his legs and they're so pathetic and yep, you're like this motherfucker has them. terrible <laughs> all the time you got genetics and you're like why fuck i'm not gonna make these any bigger you're like bro you gotta you gotta work on you them a little bit day, it's bro. a dude that works out of my gym who's jacked and he's probably in his late 50s like he's Older dude, jacked as fuck, in phenomenal shape, good looking guy, and his legs are so funny, skinny. They're so like tiny, skinny. Like his, you know, his calf is the same size as his ankle. And, it, and yeah, whenever, yeah. <laughs> whenever he does, whenever he's doing any kind of workout on his legs, I'm always like, it's never gonna help, it's man. Lovely, he did bro. too many years of up here, you know, too many years at the neck of, of looking like a fucking top heavy moose. He didn't fuck with the legs. And that's what, always my dad, whenever, when I was in high school, when I first started like really like learning how to lift in high school. He was like, don't skip legs. Everybody skips legs. He's like, don't do that. Especially if you were playing sports. Cause I That's was, right. He's like, basketball. He's like, you need to have strong legs. Because when you're young, you just want to get a bicep. You know right. what I mean? Like We had this kid in our senior year, and all he did was bench. It's all he did. He was a smaller guy, too. I was going to say, it's usually shorter guys than bench. And it was, he had a massive chest. Mm -hmm. He did. But it started to, like, sink in. Like, it was almost like his frame couldn't 
whole because he wasn't working anything else around. You right. know, he wasn't building a proportionate body. He was just building a large chest. Right, 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 right. And right. that shit doesn't, you know, it doesn't even out. It doesn't even out. It's always funny when I see buff dudes that are also kind of fat. That's always a weird thing to see a dude that like he'll eat dog shit food and then just get jacked. So he'll have tons of muscle on top of all this fat, but there's not good definition. It just is a you're just a strong fat dude. That's like, a, these, like the NFL lineman with these guys with strong fat. These got like uh, my my watch it with my daughter's brother and stuff, and he'll laugh. Like, look at that fat guy. I'm like, let me tell you something. That fat guy runs a four seven forty. Yeah, and will dust and is in there all day pushing yeah. against that guy, yeah. pushing against that guy, and he's in there not throwing up. He's playing sixteen of those fucking. Yeah, games. just breathing a little heavy sometimes. Yeah. That's all yeah. that is. What's up with those Baltimore Ravens? You're a ba- you're a, you're a Baltimore oh fan. Let Baltimore, me tell you something. You, you're done, dude. I'm 46 years old. <laughs> I feel like a fucking fifteen year old kid. I I ha, I can't. I've had my sweatshirt on yeah. the whole fucking time. This kid, they they said they were going to revolutionize offense, the yeah. offense, yeah. you know. And everybody, even in Baltimore, they were like, "Okay, okay, bro. <laughs> all, right. All, all right, right, we'll see." Okay, he sets the most rushing yards by a quarterback ever. They the first team in NFL history to average two hundred rushing and two hundred passing. The first team now in NFL history broke the Patriots' old rushing record. Right. And they fucking revolutionized offense in a pass happy NFL league and went fourteen and two. Well, he's he is a r- scary specimen. He is something else. He's kind of like he's hi- Steph Curry. Yeah. In the he, NFL. he is the hype of he is the hype is real. Yeah. And when so often people don't know how many I don't know if you if, if people aren't sports fans, so many times the hype guy doesn't turn out to be everything that you wanted them to be. No. Usually an injury comes along that devastates them or or they just kinda don't they don't really live up to those expectations because the pressure is unbelievable. But holy shit. Doing that at full speed against adult millionaires paid to take your fucking to murder career you. away. But yeah. don't you think that aren't you scared maybe that his his high intensity, his full Full go all the time is cause for injury. I feel Every like. time he moves, yeah. Even I saw Earl Thomas say that on the sideline. He's he like, they're all, they're all, they all feel that way. Like, well, because it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, that's the guy. Every yeah. time he took some unnecessary hits uh, in a couple games, but you got to be careful when you. I mean, uh, it used to be my. I always said if I was a GM, I would, I would worry probably not get a scrambly quarterback, and not just because of injury when. RG3 was killing it in D.C. He mm-hmm. played against us. Haloti Nada cleanly hit him across the middle and hit him so violently that his knee got whiplash. It like just <laughs> tore everything. Yeah, his in. knee just came out of place. Done. Yeah. I worry even more about concussions because huh. if you have a scrambling quarterback, last year our left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, his leg freakishly came up. The heel hit Lamar up under the... In, under his helmet. Under his helmet. Yeah, under, and under they face took mask. him off the field. And he missed a, a, quite a few series of plays right. getting examined just for that. So now if you have a, you know, back in the day, Steve Young's running with six concussions. Yeah, man. You can't do that shit no. today. So you're a quarterback. In addition to getting injured that way, to me, the downtime is is a bigger deal as well. And I think that's probably more likely a concussion than than tearing a knee or something. For sure. Well, I he's mean... He's 22. Do you know that... He's, he's a child. What's his name? Uh, Joe... Uh, just won the Heisman. Burrows? Oh, Burrow yeah. Burrow or Burrows? Bur- Burrows. Sure. Burrows? Yeah. yeah. He's older than Lamar Jackson. When he takes his first snap as a rookie, Lamar Jackson's got a year and a half and two playoff appearances, hopefully a fucking Super Bowl, and he'll be younger than that kid. God damn. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. That is wild. And he's such a good passer. He also led the league in passing touchdowns. Yeah, he almost did too much too fast. I'm worried. I'm like, slow down. It reminds me, send this back to you, Chicago guy, because I was a big Bulls fan when during that whole run, and especially when Rodman came. The warm, baby. I, I always loved his hustle, and I know he got crazy and everything, but Rodman, the one stat that always impressed me the most about Robin in that year was he led the league in rebounds while Jordan led in scoring, which means you're not getting a lot of opportunities right. for missed shots to yeah. pull down. And you're leading the league when the guy on your team – imagine if the guys on his team were just 50-50 fucking shooters. He would have he crushed that. Crushed. He still beat that record when a guy's leading on your team. So I've always thought he that was, impressive. was super impressive. Well, I mean, he he that team that whole that the Bulls '90s run team was was I mean, ma- it was ma- it was it was pure magic and craziness and oddity. It was kind of like what Golden State felt. You know, documentary. I know. I can't wait. You, when you, is that? Tell me. July in July 2020. Oh, it's that long. 
God dude, damn. you know what's so funny about I keep that? Keep seeing the promo. Last like, year oh. I saw the promo and I was like, hey, what do you see that fucking shit? Yeah, just Jordan. seeing people sit down in the chair, like getting ready to talk and stuff. They're Touch, not like, touching oh, their God. chest, being yeah, like, all right, yeah, are we ready yeah, to go? Yeah. Two things real fast. One, Rodman, Dennis Rodman. For people that don't know, amazing Detroit Piston, and then in my opinion, a better bull. But uh, he dyed his hair crazy colors. If you don't know, you should look it up. You should Google Rodman. But he dyed his hair crazy colors. And I have orange hair. I have already a crazy color hair. And so I would go, my mom took me to a game, and I put coloring in my hair, but nothing would sit because it's so bright and light. So then it just looked like I had dirty hair. (laughs) (laughs) I tried to put a bunch of shit. I just looked like I had filthy fucking hair. Uh, But I was such a huge fan. He was phenomenal. I mean, I... Well, McDonald's had all the cups. Remember, to get cold, they would change colors. Yes, they would change colors. Oh, yeah. Dude, I mean, that... That era of my life as a kid was so spoiled, rotten, filled with so much privilege of sports that I didn't, we didn't know any better. Like, I just thought everybody had this kind of thing happen to their city. Like, I, I mean, we knew Jordan was Jordan, but I just assumed that it was like such a normal thing to happen to big cities, especially because growing up as a kid and watching what the Yankees had always done, I was always like, oh, well, that's yeah. New York's thing. This is our thing. Right. You know, like, I felt like that was what we deserved. And then now, years later, you know, we fucking, we've been eating shit for so long. Now, I'm still a hardcore Bulls fan, but holy shit, it's so hard to, to have a city that you love other than my cubbies that won the world series a couple years ago it's just every other team has been has hurt my hurts my feelings every year i'm always like these dudes can't get it together i mean you know i don't have to tell you yeah tell me about it that's why i'm i'm so glad in particular for this football season because the orioles suck so bad yeah that if the ravens would have sucked it would be a full year of nothing to look forward to sports wise -wise, nothing to root for yeah you know like the Terps are always, oh, you know, they're number three, and then they lose to fucking, you know, yeah. Savannah State or some shit, and then now they're fucking <laughs> Louisiana 14th. Tech or yeah, some that shit. Yeah, kind of shit. Do you do you have a bar in LA that you would go to to watch games or a no. place to go? Had it got to be at well, the house. I'll give a shout out to uh, there's a, a um, West Wing. It's called. There's a Ravens group out here, and they're pretty big. I just I don't go to the bars and watch games. I stay home. Is there a specific Ravens bar? Do you know about or no? If it used to be, um, it might be the Sycamore. It might be Sycamore, Sycamore Tavern. Tavern. Yeah, yeah, it might be that. That could um, be. I, I might be wrong about that, but they did. Yes, they did have a specific bar for a while, and I think that might be the one they landed on now. But, um, and I see them around town and stuff, and it'd be fun. But it's hard. It's. But I used to back in the day. I used to go sit at the bar, and then I would drink, eat, whatever, and I'm dropping, you know, a hundred bucks, easy. And if if they lose. I'm like, what the fuck did I do that? Could have stayed at the house. And then I'm like, well, for three games, I could get the fucking Sunday ticket. Yeah. Pause it. Take yep. a piss when I want to. Yep. I'm not in line. I'm not hearing other people yell. And then I was like, yeah. Yeah, that just, changed the game for yeah, me. Yeah, I just stay home. There, now there's I watch a new, with the kids and stuff. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. You're family man too. So that's even harder. Like, there's a new um, a restaurant up here called Gino's East, a Chicago pizza place. Mm-hmm. They opened one out here. Actually, one of the family members of the original Gino's from Chicago moved out here. Him and his partner opened one. They have it out here, and they do. I went with Jonathan Jonathan Sadowski. You know him? He's, he's a funny dude, he's an actor. Um, anyway, he's a Chicago guy, and we went out there, and it was cool to be in a place where all your fans were. Because right. living here, it's hard. Yes. Because, dude, even if I was a diehard uh, Dodger fan, diehard Laker fan, diehard Rams fan, nobody goes anywhere to a thing to support the shit. Like it is in our city. Right. Dude, I went to pick up the old bag when I was in Chicago. She was at the airport, and I waited. I was there an hour early, and I got there early. The old bag. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah. The I fans like love it, too. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I drove in from Indianapolis, and I went to a bar. Um, it's just, it's just a towny bar. It's a random towny bar, like 107th or something. And I walked in just being like, oh, I guess I'll just grab a beer and wait. Man, I walked in, and I didn't want to leave. I was like... It was just so rich and filled with like people having a good time and talking shit and laughing. You know, they didn't serve food at that bar. Uh, it was just out, just liquor, you know, liquor and beer. So they had no food. So some guy goes and gets pizzas. Like just goes and gets a dozen yeah. pizzas. He's like, pizzas at the end of the bar, dude. If you're starving, <laughs> they don't want they don't want yeah. money. They don't want nothing. Right. It's just it's just a communal thing that I think. I, not to rag on LA, but it's the one thing that I wish we had so bad. I mean, shit. It just. I miss like I wish, a good wish, neighborhood yeah, bar. Yeah, I love towny bars, you man. You know, people say, "Oh, it's my neighborhood bar." It's it, there's a difference between your local bar and your neighborhood correct, bar. Correct. Correct. There and is. We used, to, we used to do this thing in Baltimore. It'd be like me and three of my friends. Um, we used to go. We'd be bored like everybody, and what we would do, we would drive neighborhoods, like specific neighborhoods in the city, 
and we'd find a bar. We go, that's the one we're gonna go into. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna you do just pick it randomly. Random. Love picks. that shit. The four of us walk in, and it's that record scratch shit, you know, because right. everyone right. in there lives in a block right or two there. of there. Yeah, they live right around it. And everyone collectively gives you the, you know, the record scratch. Like, who the fuck are these guys? Yep. So we go in, and they have karaoke. And what we used to do was, I would walk up and I would pick your song, and you don't know what it is. You don't know what it is until you walk up there and you're like, fuck. <laughs> but you have to commit. I love that. And the other thing is, you're going to pick mine. Uh, that's you know what great. I mean? So whatever, it's gonna it's coming back on me. Right, it's right, not right. Scott Free. So we used to go in there and do this shit all the time. We would karaoke and we would take it seriously just because we knew they did. Right. And by the end of the night, we'd be hitting them with a John Denver or a, you know, a sing-along. Country yeah. road. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> Where they're all clapping along and singing yeah. and shit. And they, they loved us. We'd Hell go back yes. from time to time. And one of my favorite, I, I like to tell this one because this guy, is, he was so serious. This, it was this dude, you know, he had the mullet, the blonde mullet, a little bit wavy. And uh, he's singing Never Say Goodbye by Bon Jovi. Oh, yeah. And he's crying. <laughs> He's fucking crying. He's just bawling. Crying. And there's an old salty local right next to me. I go, is this fucking guy crying right now? And he goes, this is Baltimore Sinatra. (laughs) (laughs) I've never forgot that move. Baltimore Sinatra. And he came in. We we probably did it four or five times over the course of like a summer. He came in every time and he sang that song. You know, that was his. And he killed it, I'm sure. He, no, he, no. No. No, he didn't. God, no, he, didn't. No. he did okay. He did <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. He certainly was passable, but it wasn't. Right. He know. wasn't like when you go to no, a place. No, this and you guy go. was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> This guy was wrong about a lot of shit in life, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, but that's why but that's why it's so beautiful because they just love the vibe. Like mm-hmm. they know that that's the relationship that they have in that spot. Dude, I went to a place um, Like what are you doing Friday? You know what the fuck I'm doing you know Friday. What I'm, I'm going doing. over to Crossroads and sing them never say goodbye by Bon Jovi. I have to. I, it's Bon it's what Jovi. I, do. I don't got a choice. We were in <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to. I have to. We were in uh where did I where was I was on uh oh out in um in Nashville, and they took me to, I put it on my Instagram too, they took us to this like, I mean, country bumpkin ass bar, it was so fucking funny, man, we walked in, and it wasn't a record scratch, it was more like, they turned, looked at us, and looked back at each other like, these motherfuckers don't belong, (laughs) like you could just tell, like they let us live, because they were like, you're fine, but inside they were like, these fucking bozos, these, these weirdos, where the fuck are they from, like they were just talking shit the whole time. This girl was on stage. She was, I mean, dude, you could feel how like heartbroken she was about something. And she was singing a song <laughs> in the middle of it. She's like, fuck you, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it was awesome. He's over the car like, fuck you too. <laughs> dude, it was just so, you could tell there was such real relationships and they had all had fucked around with each other. It was like kind of like incestual in that feeling because I remember um, somebody were w- w- with turning to me going, did you hear what she just said? And I go, no. And she goes, that woman was talking to this other girl, this younger girl. And she goes, you here with Mark? And she goes, yeah, he's pretty cool. And she goes, yeah, a lot of us been with Mark. <laughs> been like with it. Mark. A lot of yeah. us been with Mark. We, we came here with Mark, too. Like, hey, bitch, don't feel special. <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah. this is what Mark does. He comes Mark here. Does. That's right. He gets a hot dog and tater chips. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of Miller Lights. Oh, yeah, man. I mean those those kind of uh, those kind of uh, town bars, towny bars. Those your you your what. spot, man. I, I I love those. Whenever I travel, I don't want to go to the fucking no. popular bull. Just take me to somewhere a where bar. people are doing it. Yeah, yes. where people are doing their life. I don't want to see the, the. I've done the hoopla shit. The yeah. whole like, yo, this is where everybody wants to go, and then you go and you're like, this is fucking trash. Right. Why does everybody want to go? Trash. Here? Yeah, because it's hype. It's all right. the hype. You know. We were in there one night. And um, I'm gonna have some sauce. Have some sauce, and um, I had mine before the show. You were drinking in your car when you showed oh, up. I was. Got me nervous. Um, <laughs> two of our friends in the group had this competition between themselves of who, I don't know, it was a hundred bucks. Whoever could do outgross the other one. That was their thing. Like, like more, just be more disgusting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we yeah. would pay, we would pay the hundred dollars for whoever the person finally taps out. The other guy wins. Right. More disgusting, whatever. So we're in the bar, same bar. People are singing. Baltimore Sinatra's up. And I'm <laughs> right here on the corner. And then the bar goes this way, okay? So I'm on this corner seat facing in. Right. And my buddy's right here, this right. next one here. Right, right, right. And there's this older, much older lady sitting right next to him, clearly visibly older. 
And I, I'm over here talking, like, and I look back over here, and he has his tongue down her fucking throat. And I'm like, what the, the fuck <laughs> are you doing? I mean, she is old what and big. What are we talking? Big. What are we talking? I'll, I find out. I'll tell you in a <laughs> okay, second. Okay. Old and big. And I'm grabbing him, and he is dying laughing. He's dying. And my buddy, uh, his name's Scott, he's the one. And I go, you, he's like, mm mm, nope, nope. I go, you got to outdo that. He's, he goes, mm, I don't know about that. So next thing I know, we're at the bar. Hand down the titties. <laughs> She's got her hand down his pants. No. They are going at it. He is dying the whole time, <laughs> laughing, playing with her tits. He starts going down her pants. And I go, how old is she? How old is she? And he goes, 68. I go, oh, my God. My grandmother's 69, dude. This is fucking disgusting. He is going hard. Scott's over here like, fuck it. I'm out. I'm out. He wins. I'm done. I'm done. This bartender right here, I'm like, you fucking see this shit? This guy looks at me. He's like, that's my mom. <laughs> and it is his mom. <laughs> it is his mom. He is not phased at all Didn't because care? that's what she fucking that's does. That's what she does. <laughs> that's what she fucking does. That's her shit. That's her She's shit. Like, I come man. here, I get young, fingered. Y- yep. Give me I get that young I dick. I play a little dick. At the, I don't even have to get up. That's I hot, though. I could knock it over. Good for him, man. Let, the, let mom do what she's got to do. <laughs> I mean, Baltimore's got to have so many fucking fun bar stories just because that's a city of just, that's a city of uh, hardworking class, oh, tough yeah. people who like to fucking drink. I mean, I went, like, inter- I've had some good international fun bar stories too. I think I've told this before, but I, th- th- when you said the image of being on the corner, the funniest thing I've ever seen, I'll never forget to this day, I was in this bar in London with, with um, uh, Johnny Mosley, the Olympic skier. Now I know, I think I've definitely told the story before, but it just sticks out of my head. And his good friend who knew my buddy, and the bar was probably like four and a half feet tall, five feet tall. It was a high bar, right? And I'm leaning up against the bar, and there's no stools. It's like a it's like a walk-up bar. It's a big U. And this kid, Brian Bryden, Brian Bryden was his name. Brian Bryden, skinny dude, dark hair, funny dude, could drink like a fucking fish. Tiny guy, could black out, just keep drinking with all of us. And he's leaning against the bar, and he's smiling, He's kind of like wobbling his head. And my buddy's like, what are you doing, man? And he goes, shh, 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 shh. He's like, what are you doing, dude? He goes, just back up. I back up. I look down. His dick is out. He's got his arms on the bar. He's pissing <laughs> at the fucking bar. Because nobody can see. It's way right. up here. He's leaning against the bar. He's pissing all over the place, dude. <laughs> but he finished. This, I had to give him kudos. Finished. He pissed until he finished and oh, we walked away. No one, no one knew shit. I was that's like, this hilarious. is Brian Brighton. Yeah, that was his name. I mean... The amount of when I was, every time I traveled, when I was younger, in college especially, and right after, every time I traveled anywhere, I, we always got in the most trouble because when you're an out-of-town hardhead at somebody else's bar, you, you, it's like you feel flawless. You feel infallible. You're like, nobody can, they're not going to get, I don't live here. They're not going right. to get me. But truth is, that's the best way to get caught because then they know, you know? And that was our goal was to ingratiate ourselves yeah, into this environment in, right. and just, you know what, by the end of the night, you you ain't gonna be mad we were here, right? You want to be part yeah. of them, and we're staying until it closes too. We get in at nine, we're fucking stay. We're not leaving. What are Baltimore bars? Are they two or three, four? Two. Yeah, two. Yeah. Chicago has those three and four a.m. bars that are just like, it. You know, it's cre- it's creepy to me that to stay out that late anymore now because I'm like I don't want to stay out till yeah. four. But back in the day, I remember being like, well, you would know this yeah. place. I went to okay, so a couple some of the best bars I ever went to the Cap- Al Capone bar. What's that called? One he owned, the green... Oh, the green door. Yeah. Yeah. Is that green door? Is that right? The green door. Is that right? You're talking about... Uh, His old bu- uh, bar, and they have like a Sunday day show there that they've been selling yeah, out the for green years. Door. Is that it? The green door. So that, Now you're making me think twice because the weed is in my brain. I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went there, and it was such... It was so well kept and such a great bar. And they show me his booth and, you, and they'd show you why. Because there's an exit here and here. Yeah, they're all over the place. If they come in through the back. Yeah, and it was so fucking cool. That was a great one. You have a bar in Chicago. I think it's the greatest name of a bar ever called Where Else. Yeah, Where Else. Where yeah. are you? Yeah, Where, where else? else. And then um, I went to this other after hours joint and there was this. She was like a bigger lady, and I mean, she was shredding a fucking Gibson, and she's a blues player. You know what I'm talking about? She was doing Led Zeppelin, and no. I guess she's like a local... A local legend? Yeah. And I was like, the who's city not in? putting her on something right now? That's the problem, though. Those people that, that are so good at those things, that they'll never leave that right. little nook. Yeah. No one will ever know how good she is. She is amazing. Yeah, that kind of sh- that, that, that stuff's so common, by the way. When you travel to places, you go, 
this fucking human's so incredible. They're like, yeah, man, they're a local legend. It's like, yeah. how can they get out of this thing and become a, 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 a you know, a national legend? Yeah. It's a hard thing to do to escape where you're from because the, all the comforts are there, man. You know, like, would you think, would you be successful in comedy if you never left Baltimore? No, there's no comedy scene there. But that's what I'm saying is like, for someone there is. You know what I mean? There is a kid there you're that right. for someone there is and it's hard for them to get out. Yeah, I see. I think it takes a lot to get out of these things, you know, like, a, go, like go to, go, to go to New York, to go to LA, to do that shit. You know, to get out of your fucking comfort zone. It's just, I get it when I go home that I'm like, yeah, this is, it is, it feels so nice to be at home. And when you're away from it, it's fucking tough, man. It fucking, it's, it's just, it's hard. And you realize the sacrifice that you've made co- becomes more visible that you're like, man, it's hard to not be around family and friends. It's people that you know well. It's that whole grass is greener, you know? Yeah. Like, when I'm on when I'm on tour and people come up to me like your job's so cool and blah 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 I'm like what are you doing this weekend like just cutting the grass probably drink a beer I was like oh my god sounds nice do you do you know how much I would like to have absolutely n- just a regular job with no pressure on my shoulders for any reason mm-hmm. not to be told well we're not gonna get you're not gonna get this because you're you know you don't check these boxes right not because well you've worked this long you've done all this checklist over here the job right. is yours. And just cut some fucking grass. Yeah, I, nice. I came up with a show idea that at some point in my life, when I'm going to always say when I'm successful enough and can piss the money away, it's going to be called I'll Cut Your Grass. And like today, I'll come to a home. It's a give back show. If you've got breast cancer and you need to go to chemo, right. if you're a single parent, you don't get time off. I'm going to come over and cut your fucking grass. And here's the thing. <laughs> I'm the B-roll. You right, understand? Right, They're right, going right, to follow right. your story right. out there. And when they need a break from that story and they cut back, I'm out here weed whacking. <laughs> I'm on the mo, Bro, that's it. I'll cut your fucking grass. But I want, I demand to be the B-roll. Right. I don't even want to talk. Yeah, you just want to be. I just want to cut, cut your fucking grass. You show up and go, "Care to cut your grass?" And then they, the <laughs> camera it. moves in on them, and I'll then you're gone. I'll cut your fucking grass. They go follow your story. You need some b-roll, artful b-roll in between. I'm out there. Cutting That's the really grass. nice, man. That's thoughtful. That's what I want to fucking do. Cut it's very grass. giving. Do you but, do do you do charity shit now? Is is there something? That yeah, you do now? I, I I worked on a thing with um, Simone. Um, I donate to any charities that I can. Um, just donated to Ed Reed's Foundation. Oh, that's nice. Um, he's got a a, a great program in Baltimore. Um, but I read this quote going back to that real quick and it, it, it really changed my outlook on a lot of things. Like it resonated hard that if you're always looking for happiness in the next job, the next relationship, Mm -hmm. the next home, the next car, the next, the next, the next, you're never going to be truly happy where you are. Right. And the part, the whole key to it is being happy right here, not thinking, well, if I just get that car or if I can just get rid of this chick and go get a new chick and mm-hmm. that she'll be fine. She'll be, you know, all that, that thought process of it's always better then you're really never focusing on being right here and being happy. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I, that's strong. Yeah. It is strong. No, it, it is true. You got to start, you got to love the shit. You got to love doing. the shit that you have and, yeah. and what you've got and the opportunities that you have. And at the same time, Keep your eye on that other chick in that other car, you know? Please. Yeah, you should. You should. Because shit falls apart. Just, <laughs> just in case, man. I'll just come over and cut your grass. <laughs> yeah. I just want to cut your motherfucking you go grass. You want to see that new girl? I'll come over and cut your grass. Uh, a big life change in the past year I'm going to I want to transition to, which is kind of wild. You are murdering it right now with your podcast. You're on the Your Mom's House Network. And I was going to be a member over there. I was going to join yeah. the club. Mm-hmm. And you ran with the baton. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. And I was going to do... Uh, my own shit, my own way, but the studio is fucking incredible over there because everything is like swirling and happening now, huh? Like, Man, the, you know, and here's the thing that I love about yes, it it all everything starts from something, and and we went from actually the episode you came on the Honeydew podcast, by yeah, the way, Honeydew, Honeydew yeah, podcast. Put the link in the com. description. Um, you and I sat at a whiskey table I had built, and we looked at each other. Yes. and then we changed to the sort of it was more of like a sports center format, looking it's a desk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we're back to the original way because this is how conversation happens. This is you know, what it's I like. More yeah. natural. Yeah, it is. like this than than um, the other way. And it, you know, so the sets are changing. You know, it's it's going to be this ever evolving thing until it isn't, and right. then it settles. But um, yeah, I love it. I, I mean, Tom and Christina are great. Everybody over there is is fantastic. Well, Christina's got, great. Tom yeah, is just a real fucking my favorite term. mom. Yeah. Is Christina. Yep. Um, Dr. Drew there, they're doing Two Bears, One Cave. And then Christina has Where My Mom's At. Tom's got the new Spanish podcast, know, which insane. is fucking brilliant. Yeah. Um, and they produce them in that studio, but those two are out on their own YouTube channels. Right. So 
There's a lot happening there and going on there. I want to do an all Spanish podcast because I don't speak Spanish. I want to do. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to do one. I don't know what I'm talking about. See what the tally is. Yeah, how many words? I I want to do the. I want to do the translation from Google, so it's all fucked up and jumbled and makes no sense. You know. Yeah. Do you speak another language? No. Yeah, man. I took Spanish three. One, two, and three, baby. That's good. You should know some shit. I I, I know cacahuate. I know some Caca words. Huetes. I know some words. Right. You can't do full sentences. No. I mean, basic sentences. Can you say like, hey, my name is Ryan, and I love to play Frisbee? Um, me llamo... Uh, wait, is that even right? Hola, me llamo... Know. Hola, me llamo... Me llamo Raul. They es, call me Raul in Spanish. Raul. She told me there was no Ryan translation. I had to go with Raul. I go, what's that translation? She goes, roughly, it's Ralph. I was like, oh, <laughs> we'll take Raul. Really? Yeah. Ralph. She gave everybody names, uh, Raul. class names. And... Sí, claro. I wish I wish I took it earlier. I, I did Spanish one in like eighth grade in middle school, transitioning into ninth grade uh, and then tenth grade. And after that, I wasn't doing great in English, proper English. <laughs> I'm getting a C in Spanish, That's, and I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm done. I'm out I'm of done. this bitch. I'm out. Yeah. I mean, if it's, I just want to learn how to speak it. I don't want to be tested on it. And right. You know what I mean? I just want to learn how to speak the right. language, not be graded on how I speak. Was your teacher sexy, by the way? I feel like every Spanish teacher from my high school was so she good was, looking. It's always a hot girl. No, she was older, but she was an attractive lady. Yeah. Um, but she was older. Dude, um, I took German. I took German. Yes. Trying to get back to the old country. I just, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even. I don't wouldn't even want to listen to that. All I took. Day. To, that I took German. Well, because when I was a kid, I went to this 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 thing called LaSalle Language Academy. It's mm-hmm. a language school for kids. Kindergarten and first grade, they start to teach you secondary languages so to help your brain develop. It helps English supposedly. And my mom learned how hard was German was. To learn and German was hard and it developed language and so I tried it when I was a kid and then by the time I got to high school she was like you should just take German because you knew it when you were young young you listened to it and still even German one was so fucking hard for me because I hated it so much it's the most abrasive it's yeah. so like it's so attacking and shit like you get it when you listen to the language that the Nazis came from there you know what I mean like it just makes sense how angry it sounds and my teacher was the opposite all my friends who took Spanish had a sexy ass Latin chick. Who's like, great job today. You know, like, <laughs> kiss them, on, wish, kiss them on the head when they left. We Mine was this that. old Bezos, ass Nazi. Bezos. Bezos. Mine was this old ass Nazi woman. She was so <laughs> fucking angry. She hated me, dude. She fucking couldn't stand me. That's I what I pictured. Yeah. Ugh, that's what I had. This yeah. old mean bag, dude. But the the Spanish kids, I was always jealous. I was like, you know, Mrs. Ruiz is sexy. I'm like, I know. I fucking wish I was in that class. But I was so far behind at that point. It was like I couldn't. Ca- I wasn't gonna play catch up and go back. I wish to this day I knew Spanish. You know. Yeah, me too. And I feel I'm like annoyed. I really would have done better, and I would have pursued it more if my GPA didn't fucking depend on it. You right. Know what I mean, at 16, I'm on my own policy. I got to get a 3.0. So I figured out the system. I'm a I'm a B student. Right. But I'm a C math student. But I'm gonna get an A in gym, and it's gonna wipe that fucking C out. And I'm gonna get a <laughs> 3.0. Right. I'm gonna get my good student discount, and I'm gonna get my personal pan pizza from fucking Pizza but Hut. I, but I, okay. But I, but I, but I, but That's I, the system. That's what I got to get through school with. So 3.0 is what you graduated with? Yeah, 3.0. Yeah. And, and then did you go to college or no? Yeah, I yeah? graduated college. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did go to college. Yeah. 3.0, 3.0? Yeah. Woo! 3.0, 3.0. Straight Bs, bro. Dude, I think I was... And that wasn't easy. Yeah, that no. Was not easy. No. Well, I was... I struggled... I, 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 I skirted around the threes for my whole life. I mean, I, also... I I'm... dipped in heavy into them Cs a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Had some touch, Cs on the car. Yeah, a little... Little, 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 little... Couple of Cs, yeah. Yeah, but I would always take something that I knew I could get an A in that would balance out a C. Yeah, Jim, we didn't get a grade for. We got a, a pass or fail. That should be the way Spanish is. A, a second language should be a pass or fail. Well, you not know, a like letter like um, um, Ivy schools, like you know, like Harvard and shit. There is pass or that's pass or fail. There is it's complete or incomplete. So you either, yeah. which I think is what most of that shit should be. I think I think you know, I think it's unfair to put these monetary systems on whether or not. You grasp the concept. I think everyone's going to grasp it at different levels. And specifically levels. to how you, well, you grasp, you 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 got it at an eighty six, right? Why would that? Uh, well, yeah, you well, got it at an eighty one. Why is that any? I mean, so right. what? Because it's innocuous too. The numbers don't mean anything, right? Nothing. An eighty two is just as valid as an eighty three. Why isn't it? Why is there a difference? Right. Yeah, it should be yes or no. Yes. Right, and no is very fucking obvious. We had a lot of no's in my class, and I remember being like, that kid's a no for sure. <laughs> like, this motherfucker's not getting out of school. You just know, and just because someone's bad at it doesn't mean they should be. Like, I, I just I just disagree with the whole system that they we've always had, especially because guys like us, I would assume you're the same. It's like, distracted very easily, wanted to have fun all the fucking time. Like, you were just, it was just, 
school was a way to like kick it with friends and see more people and getting through class was like, oh, I got to just get through it. You know, like it was hard for me to engage because it wasn't interesting. It yeah, just wasn't interesting. It wasn't. And no. for me, I didn't have parents from 16 through graduation. So trying to concentrate on math and shit, <clears throat> I'll Fuck tell you this that. story. Because you grew up with grandparents, right? Well, I had, my father died when we were 16. My mom had already split. Then we had to go live with her once he passed. Oh. And because of that, she just left. So she would come home on Sundays, wash clothes, catch up, and then she'd go stay at her boyfriend's all week and just leave us be. And nobody would come see you? Nobody. Holy shit. And we took care of ourselves. And I have a twin brother and a younger brother. So rarely ever did my twin brother and I have the same classes. We were separated purposely. Because so they knew you'd be fucking around. Probably. <laughs> yeah. And also, like... Sports teams, we had to play on the same team because our well, parents yeah. were like, we're not taking you to fucking two play practices. That makes shit. sense, though. You know, but class, separate them, let them be individuals. But this one math class we had in 10th grade, it was intro to calculus. And I sucked at math. I just, it, I wasn't good at math. And he was better at other shit. So this was my class to fuck up, but we're in this class together. Mm-hmm. And... um we get hit with this pop quiz and it didn't matter if it was a pop quiz or he told me about it a month ahead. I was still going to not do well on yeah. this fucking quiz. It, all of them were pop quizzes yeah. to me. You know? it could have, yeah. I was like, I, I knew quizzes we were, are pop quizzes. I knew it was coming. It yeah. was a pop quiz. <laughs> they just call them quizzes pop quiz. Everything's a qu- We had a pop quiz this week. We had a pop yeah. quiz. Yeah. But I told you about two weeks ago. It's still, still pop, popping on me popping right, right now, up, man. Popped up. <laughs> so I fail it miserably. And then I get it back and he says to the class, Take this home, have your parents sign it. Oof. I'm not going to have my dad oh, sign it. Oh, the anxiety of that and shit. Like, Take fuck. this home. So I forge it. Yeah. Who do you forge? I forge my dad because he's who we're living with. I was going to say, if oh, I thought if your dad was dead and you forged it, that'd be some not nice yet. cold shit. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. I sign it. And then, whatever, go back to class. And on Friday, his name's Mr. Mangold. I've been starting to tell this story on stage a little bit, but... um. He goes, Sickler Brothers, up in front of class. He was a super nerd. He had the fucking pocket protector. Sickler Brothers, the please report and, to yeah, the front of the class. And, and, but he was cool as shit. And in front of the class, he's like, Sickler Brothers, you guys have different dads? And I'm like, huh? And then it hits me. And I look at my brother, and this motherfucker failed it too. And he did the same goddamn <laughs> he pours thing it too. I did. But we didn't tell each other. We didn't tell, talk about I didn't be like, I failed that fucking Because you quit. didn't want to let him know that you failed. I just didn't even think he did. He was good at math. I just uh, sucked at uh, math. So I forged it. I wasn't saying shit. And uh, right away, I just, I'm like, you motherfucker. And the whole class starts laughing, and he holds him up, and he's like, two, same dad, right? We're like, oh, yeah. shit. He's like, two different signatures. <laughs> But he's got a smile on his face. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he's like, does your dad know about this? And right away, we jump on the same page. We're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He totally course, knows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's cool with it. He knows we did that. We, he just said we could sign it. But we told him. He's like, all right. He said, uh, well, it was Friday night. I'll never forget. And they had a little sub shop in town, pizza and sub shop called Pat Paps. And it was two for one <laughs> pepperoni pizzas. Pat, Pat Paps. Paps. But come on down to Pat Paps. <laughs> Boy, Friday get yourself night. two for one. Dude, I can I see Pat Paps right now. <laughs> Pat Paps, boy, come on in. But a pizza, you don't, you don't find that out here in a sub shop. A sub shop. That's exactly right. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So yeah. he's got a van. He's got the family. He said, I'm taking the family out. He's telling the whole class, I'm taking the family out. We're going to go get our two-for-one pepperoni pizzas at Pat Paps. <laughs> and I'm going to swing by the Sickler household and see if your dad really does that. We're yeah. like, you're not coming by. He's like, I'm coming by. We're like, you are not coming by. He's like, I'm definitely coming by. So whatever. Class ends. We're both 16, and we split a car, which is the other thing that sucks about a twin. I get it every other weekend. Oh, I don't just get to go when I want right. to go. It's his right. turn this week. I'm going where fuck I want to go. So it's my turn. We get home at school like 4 o'clock. I get the car. I'm gone. I don't have to be back till midnight. I come in like right around midnight. And my dad and my brother are sitting there. And they're like, <laughs> Mr. Mangold, stop by. I go, bullshit. And my dad's like, you guys are fucking idiots. And he's laughing. He's, t- he's yeah. like, I go, he did not come by. He's like, yes, he did. We took a picture and everything. I'm like, bullshit. And he's like, he came by, told me you guys forged fucking things, whatever. A very short time after that, my father dies. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how long. Week, couple weeks. Damn. Very quick. And um, we end up getting the picture back. And there he is. Now, 
it's it just goes so deep. So we get back to class, and he, and the teacher says, he pulls me aside after me. He says, "I have to ask you, was that the, one of the last pictures taken of your father?" And that's when it hit me. I was like, "Oh, that that's the last picture we ever took of my dad." Is him standing there shaking our math teacher's hand. They're both smiling. He's in like a a Russell gold hoodie. The teacher's got his tie. You know, same shit. Right. And I was like, I started thinking about it, like. If we hadn't been twins, like it goes all the way back to the ball bag. If we yeah. hadn't been twins, if we hadn't been in the same class, if we hadn't failed the same fucking test, if we hadn't done the same thing, if 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 it was today, they could have shown me a picture of that moment. You know what I mean? Like here, here he is. Came over tonight. He was here, you know, time right, Just on my iPhone. But we yeah. had to wait to get that fucking, you know, take yeah. it, process it, and get it yep. back. And I was I was like, that's that's I'm glad I fucking for the first time in my life, I'm glad I cheated. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. It's the new year. Do you still have clutter in your house? I know some people do spring cleaning. I like to do new year cleaning as well. And you can't just give it away. You can't just throw it away. You have something that's worth something to you. So you need to sell it. And eBay, come on. eBay's baloney pony. Everybody knows that. There's a bunch of companies on there. Sharks, illegal dealings going on. You can't just put stuff up. You want another marketplace that's valuable, that's reputable, that has a, a great amount of humans, over 45 million downloads maybe mercari is the place for you m-e-r-c-a-r-i the app it's incredible i personally sold my xbox one that i never played because i'm too busy partying having a good time drinking with my friends no i just ran out of time i couldn't really couldn't really play it and i'm not that good at video games to be very honest with you so i got on mercari and i sold it and it was incredible it's very easy to use user friendly has over 500,000 uh reviews i mean this thing is it, it, it's exactly where you want to be uh if you're looking to sell something uh, from a reputable company to other people just like you that are looking for stuff that you have that they need uh, They view themselves as the Robin not the Batman dude. They they're the underdog. They're the little guy They're the ones um, that are trying to facilitate good easy convenient sales for two parties to trade good gear So no one's getting ripped off. No one's getting scammed um, It is perfect So if it's the new year for you and you're looking to make new space in your life and not have clutter around your house do yourself a favor and download Mercari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I, like 45 million other human beings have already done. Check it out and uh, sell, sell some stuff or buy some stuff. Whatever you need to do to make your life a little bit crisper and cleaner. Whiskey Ginger fans, if you're like me, you like sipping on the old whiskey ginge. Uh, or just whiskey. Doesn't matter how you take whiskey, as I learned from a great distiller. You drink it the way you like it. Uh, this right here is Screwball Whiskey. It is... Betty Betty Good Stuff. It's uh, from uh, OB, California, here from Southern California. It's some SoCal whiskey, dude. This is the peanut butter flavor, man. Peanut butter is good. I tried to give it to my dog. She threw up everywhere, dude. She loves peanut butter, so this is really strange that she didn't like this. Uh, but it is delicious stuff originating here in Southern California. Um, the, the originator uh, is a polio survivor. So come on, man. I mean, help this dude out. You know what I mean? He's beat some real legit stuff, but this is delicious. You can put screwball whiskey on anything. You can drink it uh, as a shot. You can put it on some ice. You can put it with ice cream, which is what I've done before, and I liked it very, very much. I put some in my coffee. I put some in my tea. I put some in my water. I put it in really anything if I'm wanting to have some peanut butter flavor injected in there. Um, go to screwballwhiskeygetcom uh, Go check this out. Go buy it at any local store. It is uh, it is good for the drinking, dude. It's 70 proof. Um, so you feel it, you know what I mean? You're not going to get wrecked, but you're definitely going to feel it. Please drink responsibly. Um, but it is absolutely delicious and, uh, it's worth every little drop. So please go get yourself some screwball whiskey. Support those that support the whiskey ginger show, my friends. Back to the episode. Ginger. I like gingers. That That's deep one. as fuck, man. It, it went deep, yeah. Sometimes those things help, I'm right? I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm not saying you should, I say this before, I made a post on Instagram, like, I'm not saying you should cheat, but I'm saying, like, two things, especially as a parent, I gotta remember to be that cool, too. Yeah. I can't fly off the fucking handle about, like, they could've. The teacher was cool about could've it. Could've lost it, yeah. Yeah, he was cool about it, and then he actually came over and made this moment. I'll never forget it. And so I, I told that story at a show in Baltimore, and one of the girls I know from high school, <clears throat> she's his next door neighbor. And she's like, I'm going to tell him. So she told him. And I told he he wanted to tell me what his side of it. And I was like, I would love to know. 
like the moment you're grading our papers and you're like, wait a second, Shit. and yeah. you put it all together, and then you come to cl- like, I would love to hear. Oh my god, his side his of how this happened, yeah, yeah, how dumb he fucking thought we were, and then to actually roll by the fucking house. He has kids out in the van. They sat out there. But they got, they got their pap paps though, so they're <laughs> good. The they're in the van with the pap paps. <laughs> Dad, where are you going? Sit in the car with the pap paps. That's all right. I got some shit to do. <laughs> that was more, I mean, not to not to harp and reminisce on that kind of stuff, but it was more special to wait for a picture to come back. I mean, the anxiety was so exciting, you know? You know, it was like, I want to see that fucking photo. It's like, what a great moment to be able to capture. There was no redos, no retakes. Nothing. I, I remember a comedian back in the day, and I, I wish I could remember who it was. This is when I was a kid. I remember watching this guy. Do a bit about uh, Sea World, and Shamu jumped, and he snapped it, and he looked at the family, and went, "Hope we got it." You know what I mean? Like he <laughs> saved not... all this money yeah. to come all this way to watch this whale. Jump I think in a... so. <laughs> in the picture, it's just the kid squ- squinting. There's a yeah, tail going yeah, in the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's our Shamu. But those are. Right but that's there. what's. That's what makes my mother's always about that. My mom still to this day. Whenever there's photos, she hates uh, still photos. She hates like posed photos. Yeah, she hates it. So she complains every time someone's like, "Okay, did it?" My mom's always like, "Just, just, just go, just do it." She just wants them to do it, you know, random natural, or yeah, yeah, natural. She's like, "Just take it, just take it, just take it." And I do agree. Whenever I see those natural photos, man, do they look so much more fucking fun and oh, more yeah. realistic mm-hmm. and more like, oh, that's what these people were up to right then. There, right. there, there is no you see the moment there, not the pose. And I know, I, I know that's the one thing I'm trying to do is not sound like my dad or be so much like my dad's like, well, it was better when we did it. It's like not everything is better when we did it. I, I also I get why things are the way they are sometimes, but some moments will be sweeter because of the lack of technology i think because we lack technology in departments like that back then it made it somewhat more valuable i don't know you know i can't really articulate to a, a younger generation who's like what are you fucking talking about who get like that sounds annoying that i had to wait for the th- you know but like that co- that computer has you know a terabyte filled of bullshit of pictures that i probably never look at because it's all from my cloud and my phone that's just right. whoop 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 there's nothing about it I every photo i took when i was a kid i looked at them multiple multiple oh, times yeah. over and over i can over and remember and over. them in my brain yeah, see, yeah. that's what's crazy. I, I, in my phone, I couldn't. I could tell you the last three things that are in there because I just saw them recently. But back at the house, in my old room, I recently found a huge stack because I made doubles and triples. Remember, you used to make copies. Yeah, you're like, I'll get doubles, dude. I'll get you yours. <laughs> I found a stack of doubles and triples of Spring Break. <laughs> triples, yeah, man. triples, bro. I remember triples. Yeah, as a, a, of Spring Break, I found them and. I can phys- I can visually see almost every photo that's in that, and there's probably I don't even know four cameras worth of photos, you know, four 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 disposable rolls of photos, and I remember almost every photo, and I remember so well what we were doing when we took them because it's etched in your brain differently, mm-hmm. you know, like it's just something burns into your head when you had to wait for it, and you were also taking a picture for some reason had a little bit more fun to it. It was like exciting to get to take a picture. It's not, I mean, this sounds such like fucking okay, boomer talk. I'm sure, like, you know what I mean? It sounds like That's outdated what my bullshit. That's stepson but. says to me. Okay, every day. boomer. Okay, boomer. He just drops it nonstop. <clears throat> First of all, you, you're not. But I know, and I explain that to him. Yeah. Like, you guys are so fucking dumb. So you're, dumb, you you're, don't even you're know what that means. You're in the wrong generation. <laughs> yeah. I go, tell me the truth. You had to look it up. He goes, I did. I did. Yeah, they don't know. Like, what the you fuck don't that even is. know. But now it's the joke. No, no, but that's the joke. I'm like, don't tell me how jokes work. Right. You all fucked up, and now you're just trying to ride it out. Right. You've uh, well, but that's the thing is like uh, all of those things because of the internet have circulated things that are uh, not even true. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's, oh yeah, that's like exemplified non-truths. Yeah. The internet it, it takes one a hold popular of meme. Yeah. will do more than twelve years of education. Hundred percent. Yeah, that. Well, how like how old is your how old is your kid? My daughter's five and her brother's sixteen. Right, the five year old though, she's gonna she's entering into a world of like pure technology yes. growth it's going to be crazy right that's crazy. a strange thing like we just got not we but um our nieces got iphones for mm-hmm. Christmas, and you know look yeah they get them young now like it is what it is it's more to take you know for the parents to stay in contact and know where they are like all that shit but it is crazy to think like that technology in such a young person's hand it's an insane amount of access oh it's still it's, it, it's insane right everything's there like when we were kids and i know it does sound old guy stuff whatever but you couldn't just go anywhere and watch porn or look at 
beheadings yeah. or go to, <laughs> yeah. you know what I, yeah. like, you want to see war. a plane crash? You want to see yeah. a dead body? You want to see right. a plane crash? You want to see this? You want to see, want to see lightning strike a fucking cow? You know, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. They it's, just get it's it. It's there. It's just there. I also liked the, um, there was a sweeter time and I'll meet you there. And then if, you know, I'll you just, call you at I'll, seven. Yeah. I'll meet you there. I'll call you then. Yeah. Going to the movie theater. I remember, I can't remember how many times that people were supposed to come to the movies, but you're like, we're just going to watch it. We'll figure it out afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, guess, I guess they're not coming. Movies at 730. Yeah. I guess they're not. The phrase, I guess yeah, they're not coming, they're not doesn't coming. exist anymore. Yeah. I guess they're not coming. Some, keep hitting somebody. Yeah. What's up, man? Are you coming? You all right? Hey, man, are you coming over? Now you start I mean, like, we scheduled this yeah. a week ago, and I texted you two days ago, and I said, we're still good, right? Happy New Year. And we just like to check in because it's yep. cordial. Back in the day, it was like, hey, we made that plan. Remember, you're supposed to be here Wednesday at five. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Right. Remember. But you did remember that. You did. You did. Because you, you just had. I knew didn't phone have a choice. numbers. I could tell you a bunch of phone numbers. How do I know them all right I now? I still don't know my passwords these days. Like there's shit that just gets pushed out. You know. Well, I know that's what creeps me out. Is the more passwords that I have, like I have a password list that's being compiled and stored for like different, diff, all these different. Like we were talking about, you like still have phone numbers in your head. Hundred percent. My grandmom's two four two five seven six five. We had a seven nine five one five. Seven three. We had a seven nine five two one eight two. I remember my dad's first. Well, not his first, but the first license plate I remember of my father's car was a Datsun B two ten wagon. And what was it? And it was BDA 054. I remember it. It, it, it burned into your day. brain. BDA 054. I, I just lost my wallet last week. Dude, I can remember that goddamn license plate. <laughs> I was in the it fucking grocery store. Nuts, I forgot my phone number for the awards, you know, for the CDS yeah. card. I'm not kidding. You I was staring at it and I was like, for a minute. And, I, and I literally was going through my head. The other day, I re signed up for an app and my first bank account in LA was chase a bank of america or chase whatever it was but i hadn't been on the, hadn't had an app for them for years because i haven't used them in years and when it opened it up it was my old phone number but it said we're texting this number and it was just the oh. last two digits you know mm -hmm. and it was nine nine and i go that's my old fucking phone number but i remember that clear as day you know why because when when i got that phone they used to write your phone number on the box in fucking sharpie oh, you know i had right. my fucking yeah, phone right, number yeah. on the box <laughs> So I can see it right now, nine one seven four four nine nine. But I just was like, "That's crazy that that it, that it was so singed into my fucking skull." It's also probably a product of youth. The things that you remember, they have m meaning for specific times in your life. That was my first phone, right? So it was, you know, when I had Snake on that bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm fucking. I, that was God, my first phone. I don't know if it's been... I just remember when you moved, you had to get a new area code and a new number. Now yeah. it's like, you can go wherever the fuck you want with that no, number. No, you don't have to get a new yeah, number. Yeah, nothing. I had my Chicago number for a while, and then I had to get rid of it. I didn't have a choice. Got to get some more agua in there. See, I told you. Look at that. Fill, it up, fill, fill it up, baby. Yeah, look at that. That's what happens. Just when you smoke pot, you got to hydrate, kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to stay We eat nice water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How long have you been smoking pot? I started late, at least I think late since I've sat down and talked to so many people to tell me they started at like 12 or 13. I didn't start. The first time I smoked marijuana, it doesn't even really count. I was 18 and I took a hit of an ashy bowl that was gone. I didn't do it again. Oh, I know that flavor. You know I, can, I can feel that flavor in my brain that's of like what, an old that shitty bowl taste. that's already burnt. You're yeah, like, and I was like, oh. And then smoke. 21 is when I started smoking. And I didn't, I only smoked on weekends for years. I don't think until my 30s I started, maybe a little bit before that, started smoking night. Because it was like a party gig. It was like a party thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, dude, I oddly agree, and I know I'm, you know, whether or not people like this, I don't give a fuck, but I smoked for the first time when I was 15. I've been smoking for a, quite a while, but I don't wish, in retrospect, I smoked pot back then. Like, I wish I waited till a lot longer, you know, just because they see all the development. I, I'm cool with people smoking pot. I, I am an advocate of marijuana, but I do think that it should be weighted uh, for the development of your brain it does stint your brain it is not great for someone with an undeveloped brain and when no you're 15 doubt. it's not good you know no. it's the same thing as the juice the sauce is really bad for you when you're young too you're just developing in your brain it's not like restricting the youth because it's like you can't handle it or whatever but you know 15 i didn't understand what it was like popping drugs in my mouth and smoking pot and drinking and fucking you just thought you just want to have fun yeah i wish tw like 2021 i think they say between 18 and 21 is when your brain is at its full capacity development wise is not going to change much more and i in that window i think is the smartest time to, to try stuff i would always say to the youth man i want to say it to my own kid be like listen dude 
I know you're going to want to try stuff just because that's the world, but if you can wait till you're past 18, You'll be like so I, much I promise you it. it's worth it. Yeah. It, it just, it just is like, you know, I mean, dude, yeah, I was 15 getting fucking stoned out of my brain and I don't, God knows what that did to me. You know, I was talking to my, um, you know, did you go to school high, class high? Fuck yeah, oh, dude. God, Holy shit. I don't shit. think I could have ever done that. Holy shit. Knowing what I know about marijuana now, I feel like it would have made those classes feel like three fucking hours. It did sometimes, it but so other times boring. you got lost in your brain of of, of wonder. And yeah. because it was because marijuana was so too. fresh in your yeah. head, it was just like I mean, dude, <laughs> I had a I had a there was a talent show that I won at, You won a talent show? I won like the Mr. High School or whatever. Like yeah. the senior year Mr. What'd you do? Oh, this is so embarrassing. What'd you do? <laughs> I got I got a talent show. One yeah, for I did. Uh, I, I, I did um, uh, the beatboxer Razel. Do you know who that is? You remember him? He did the ABCs, and I did that on stage. Mm. And I was beatboxing while I was singing this song. If your mother only knew, you should. You guys should look up what Razel did. This is a. This is very uh, uh, <laughs> fucking late '90s reference to hip hop. But anyway, I did that. Uh, as my talent or whatever, and then and what? How old? Fifteen? You know, high school? You say high school? No, this was my senior year. I was seventeen okay. or something, like that. eighteen. But um, anyway, anyway, I won, and I went out the next week at lunch, like we always did, and went and got high as fuck, and came back in, and my Mister Mister Hart, I think his name was, he was a drunk, like he had shit in his desk. Remember the rumors of being like, "Yo, he's drinking," yeah. and and at some point you're like, "No, he's not." But then we saw the boost, yeah, yeah and you were like, yeah. "Oh shit, he is getting <laughs> fucked up, dude." <laughs> He was an old dude. You could tell he was ready to retire. He didn't give a fuck, but he always had a coffee cup. There was always, always vodka and something else in there. It was never coffee, okay? Never coffee, because you'd walk by and be like, it's not brown. It's not brown. It's yeah, you coffee. knew. And uh, and he was kind of a slow talker, a bigger man. And rest in peace. I don't think he's around anymore. Anyway, he is. Watch, he's listening. He's like, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. But Mr. Hart, I walked into class. Here. I walked into class late. I was like 10 <laughs> minutes late. And... um. I was so baked. It was like one of those times when I got way too high at lunch. And uh, you guys were allowed to leave at lunch. Yes, oh, athletes, yeah, we seniors, weren't. and athletes oh, could leave. Okay. Yeah, you had you had open campus. Yeah, and um, yeah. By the way, California kids, we grew up in schools where it's fucking inside. Out here, it's like yeah, we weren't allowed to leave at all. Fuck no, yeah. no. That you. Well, I mean, freshmen can't even think about it. You know, unless mm. you get unless you have like uh, some medical excuse or whatever. But um, anyway, yeah, we come back in. I'm baked out of my head, and I'll never forget to this day. I just go to sit down. He's like, Mr. Santino. And I was like, hey, sorry, I'm late. sorry I'm late. You know, I was just trying to bury my head at my desk. And he's like, I heard you had a great performance on Friday. I was like, no, yeah, it was very fun. He's like, well, since you're late and you took some of my time, I'm going to take some of your time. And he goes, I want you to get up in front of the class <laughs> and perform what you did on Friday. Dude, I'm not the kidding. Whole thing? I'm not kidding. And so I was like, no, 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 I don't want to. He's like, <laughs> And you're baked. Dude, I'm baked out of my head. And he goes, and he goes, and he goes, he goes. He probably do. He, he, go, he goes, it's either you perform or you can walk yourself down to the principal's office because I was, I had been late all the time. He was doing this thing as like, a, here's the exchange. I know you guys go get high at lunch. Mm -hmm. He fucking knows. He's like, you can either do this or I'm finally going to clip you for it. You know what I mean? It was like the last straw. So I got up in front of the class and I remember, <laughs> I remember being like, I was so fucking high, and I was like, uh, "Could somebody? Uh, can you turn off the front lights? Like two rows of lights, you know?" I was like, "Can you turn off the front lights?" And he was like, "Why?" I'm like, "It puts me in a better mood." <laughs> and they turn off the front lights, and it did help me get into a place where I was like, "I think I can perform this without panicking, without yeah. freaking out." And so I did like half of it, and the crowd, you know, the class liked it. They clapped and everything, and I sat back down, and he just stared at me and smiled for like a full minute, like, "You did it. I'm gonna let you go." I know though. <laughs> like I, he was like, "Don't think I don't know, bitch. Right. I fucking know." He was cold, dude. Dude, I, I had, I, I was, uh, I got because we got in trouble. I got kicked out of, um, I got kicked out of a lot of stuff, but I got kicked out of um, silent study. Did you guys have that shit? Yeah. Si they kicked me out of silent study hall. Yeah, study hall. Silent. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. And come on, you want me to be quiet? Yeah, right. You want this guy to be quiet? You're out of your fucking mind. So we had silent study, and they kicked me out of silent study. And so what I did was I ended up working for the the they gave me they were like you have to have some kind of job or class so the cop there the campus cop made me like do filing and do all his bullshit and this is the beginning of a movie that i should write him and i became like kind of buddies like at first i was a santino punk ass whatever and then he like loved me because he would i would tell jokes all day we'd be fucking around he was a young cop too and uh at some point 
I saw the beginnings of what could have been me being like, hey, can I play with your gun? You know what I mean? Yeah, and him be like, totally. yeah, check it out. Yeah, like, it out. <laughs> like, Safety's off. I saw, I saw this world <laughs> unravel of like how easy it could be in this cr- crazy, like what, if I did something fucked up and I call him, be like, I need your help, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know something shady about him. So it's like, now I've got him on the clip. It's like how cops get in trouble. It's like they let some, a punk in. Whenever they let a punk in, it's like, that's the beginning of every single movie story you've yep. read where the cops went bad is because they let a good kid who just as having a tough time into their world. And they're like, what do you mean you can get 100 pounds of fucking crystal meth by Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's the beginning of a, of a yep. shitty cop movie. But yeah, I had to work in his fucking office. I mean, he, I fucking, I, school was tough, dude. It was tough for me. It was just tough. My parents didn't get it. They were like, you're not a dumb kid. Why do you do so bad? I couldn't communicate to them how, and I'm sure there's a lot of kid people listening to this that had the same experience. It's like, oh, no it just doubt. didn't click. I yeah. just, I it's, was like, it's I saying that hate this. every human being must learn education and be educated this way. And yeah, it one way. Doesn't, this one way. And yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. And not for everybody. Like, I hope when my, my daughter gets to college, they've backed off of this four year bullshit that you don't need. You know, right. you need, if you know what you want to do, you need two, two years. years. I totally and agree. That's it. Yep. And you're, you're working on that trade. That's If you want to be a, a, a programmer or if you want to, um, you know, code or if you want to be, well, doctors obviously different, but you know what I'm saying? You need a good two year program. You don't need, why do I have to take math if I'm never going to use it in my yeah. fucking job? It, basic why do I have to take math. I should have psychology. to take basic yes. math as a youth that's and it. that's it. Yeah. That's all I need. Yeah. Basic math. Basic, if I, basic If math. I choose to pursue a job like, you know. Engineering. Um, engineering or or design or, or um, uh, what do you call it? Finance. Fucking architecture. I mean, yeah, any fine. of that. Then, yes, fine it. Then, Give me then, math. Then let me teach, teach me that math. <laughs> right. But. There's no reason I need that shit. No, I mean, I, well, but to be fair, too, is like, on the other side of the coin, I was so blank about what I wanted to do. I mean, I knew this is what I wanted to do, but I was so scared that this wasn't a viable option that in college, I remember thinking, damn, dude, I don't, I'm fuck, I, I gotta, gotta, I gotta get good at some, one of these classes, you know? Turns out creative writing and journalism was where I got my degree in and where I succeeded, but it was also like, that still scared me because I was yeah. like, this isn't a skill enough. No. You know, my friends are gradu- graduating from business school with, with, and then they're going to get their master's in business and they know they're going to go, you know, get a sale, you know, marketing sales, yada, all that shit. That fucked me up. And I think that fucks up kids today. And if people, if, if you're young enough and you're in school right now and you're listening, fucking don't worry about that shit. Like that'll get, that'll, that'll give you the worst anxiety of like, what am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be going? What should I, I mean, that shit drowns you for no reason. And also you've just been, especially if, school doesn't work for you and you're an intelligent kid you've just been taught all this shit and you're like now i'm thrown out into the yeah good luck real world Go what get am it. i supposed to do with all that shit that i it didn't even speak to me right you know what i mean it didn't even know it's not i'm supposed to go to this university but before i find out what i really want to do i got to take two years of your bullshit courses just so you all can pay your fucking fees and everything get the fuck it's out bullshit of here. it's terrible what do you think now i want to ask you i'm curious what do you think about pay to play because you know california approved pay to play for athletes i think Cal- it's great yeah I, for college athletes i say all the time the the three most crooked institutions in our country in order are just politics in general yeah NCAA mm-hmm. junkyards. Okay. Those, those <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> For a second, hit me with the junkyard. Why are well, junkyards I, so I crooked? I've been telling a story about it. I grew up working in my uh, friend's dad's junkyard, and they're just, you know, like, so we used to have this guy named Meso, this this older black man. I would It would be my Meso? job. Meso? And it would be my job twice a year to go down to this rough-ass neighborhood in Baltimore pick him up and bring him out. And he, his specialty was rolling back odometers and he could roll back. Remember the early digital alarm clock? Yes. Looking, this dude could do all of them. So he's rolling them back and then they're selling them at that. Of course. So at 16, these drivers start taking me like, Oh, we got to go pick up this car. I'll drive. And then you drive that one back. And I was 16. I'm like, yes, all I want to mm-hmm. do is drive. Right. But we're always going to this fucking like strip mall and the keys are always in the car and I'm just always driving it back. But the first handful of times, I'm just stoked to drive. And sure. after about the third or fourth time, like, they're always here. The keys are, oh, fuck. These are stolen cars. Yeah, I'm bro. driving stolen fucking cars. <laughs> yep. And we would take them back. And then what I found out they did later was crush them up, part them out, 
melt them down, and then that person would report their car stolen and collect on the insurance. Hundred percent. Yeah, insurance fraud. So I'm driving these fucking. St- You're breaking like six laws at once. I mean, I'm 16 and I'm yeah. doing all that, and then just the, the drugs. I, I learned about cocaine. Um, because the one guy would come in hung over every morning and be like, all right, I'm going over to my office. And then, and then within 30 minutes, he would kick that front door up and be like, woo! And I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's Time to scrap fucking, some cars! Yep, that's cocaine. Yeah. Um, so all these crooked things are going on there. And um, yeah, I just like to throw them right behind the NCAA. But back you, to it. Th- because you think that's the sh- junkyards oh. are shady, well, shady Well, also, spots. it's not just them. Like, if you just have a busted mirror on your car... They'll call a junkyard. They're not getting. You're not getting there if it's in good condition. They'll come and look at it, inspect it, be like, "Yeah, we'll take this." Yeah, and they'll put it right on your fucking car. And they might have paid sixty five dollars for it. Right. You know. Right. So it happens a lot at body shops. A lot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot. I watched it all, and I was like, "Oh, you are all fucking crooked." Yeah. Insurance, all of it. But yeah, well, insurance is just a is a potential threat. It's so yeah. funny. Give it to us or something bad's going to happen. Yep. People are like, oh, shit, we have to give the money or something yep. bad's going to happen. Now, for my childhood best friend, he worked for a company for a long time. Uh, they insure uh, uh, a myriad of things, but they also insured uh, titty bars. You know why they insured titty bars? Ain't nobody getting hurt at a titty bar and suing a titty bar because guess what? What are you going to tell your wife? <laughs> That's a good point. Where'd you slip and break your leg, babe? <laughs> That's a great point. Where'd you, how'd you break your arm? Yeah, doing what? I, I thought you were out last night. <coughs> Didn't you go yeah. out with the guys to play poker at Tim's house? How'd you break your arm at Tim's house? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Why do these look like titty bruises on yeah. your face? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have glitter all over your fucking face? <laughs> yeah. How could you that was such a it was such a genius no. I mean that wasn't their little their their literal interpretation. They they tried to skirt around and be like, oh no, that's a value of bars and bars and nightclubs and all that shit. But you're like, no, strip clubs make the most sense. Ain't nobody getting hurt in a strip club no. and is gonna sue. No fucking way. You don't want to be litigious about what you're up to because a strip club would go, um, should we show the court when you got your dick sucked? And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the video. Yeah, yeah. It's because because we have all the video. You know that we have the the video. Other, you know. Anyway, goodbye. Yeah. So so yeah, I think their insurance is a scam. But jumping back, yes, I love the pay to play. You think pay to play is a good idea? I do think it's a good idea. I mm-hmm. think that if you are a Michael Jordan, well, I know that's I know that's an extreme case, but I think that if you're a Michael Jordan type person in college and they're making bank off of selling your jersey right. and your put you know everything then you're everywhere you're you everywhere should, you should get a fucking cut of that why right. shouldn't why should the ncaa only take the money why should that university only take the money and then there's their then their side of it is saying well we're giving you a free education that's what they're saying now you think but you earned that education you right. have allocated money for student athletes that can take this money you're not you're not giving it so much as I earned it. Right. It, you have this money. Well, the irony for me is uh, when they use that argument, you know, like my dad uses that argument. Like, well, you do, you're know, getting a free education. It's like, well, education is a fake number anyway. Uh, college is, one college is worth six grand. Why is the other one worth 50 grand? Right. What the fuck is the difference? You're saying the faculty is that much stronger? Right. You're saying that you're saying the, the curriculum is that much better? Outside Let me tell you of something. Ivy League. Exactly. Outside of Ivy League, you're all the price. fucking same. You are. It should be all the same. It's, it's yeah. a nonsense thing, especially because you meet enough college professors over the years and you're like, I'm smarter than this motherfucker. Yes. This guy's teaching shit. Yeah. This Bozo can't par- parallel park. The yep, fucking, no, they got out of here. No doubt. So I yep. think I think that's a part of the scam that bothers me about it. The other scam is to me, you're 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 forcing kids to make sure they get a certain number of years of eligibility depending on the sport in college before they go pro, which is basically saying we need your ticket for a couple years and then you can fly free. That's right. Yeah, it's handcuffing you until they think it's valid for you to fly free. Now, yes. why? What would the, what would be the reasoning other than money? We need to get our two years worth of money. That's out of exactly these right. Yeah, that's it, it. yeah, that's it. So I so I'm pro it, but I do think there should be some right, uh, like anything else, right? Like I'm pro gun. I've always said I'm pro gun. There needs to be regulations. Agreed. I think there should be a lot of things that come before the thought of should you know should everybody have a gun? It's like well, I think first of all. You drive a fucking car, you need to get a license, you got to drive 90 hours behind that bitch before they even give it to you. You know, it's like, same thing with the gun. I, I don't think you should buy one the same fucking day and get one that day. I think you should have more checks. I think you should have a, a license. Agreed. You know, the idea that you don't have to have a license to pop a gun is wild to it me. It's is. Like, it is. You should. You have to have a license to fish. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. To and they'll, fish. they'll fine you for and it. And they will hit yeah. you hard for You're that. in a river, you're yeah. just catching some cars. Hold up! <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck here he my, comes. Get my fishing license. He's oh, dude, coming. if you're on a boat in the middle of a lake and you don't have life enough life vests, they'll yep. ticket you for that shit. Yep. But you're telling me you can go grab a gun and pop up. So anyway, yep. jumping, jumping, I'm digressing a million different ways. But um, I do think the regulation should be some sort of cap, right? Because once you start paying some guys more than others, that gets shaky to me. 
But so, here's the other thing, too. Like, they're saying, well, we're giving you a free education. And Andrew Santino's like, I just made you $1.5 in concessions. Right, right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Like, right. in parking out there. Right. They're coming to see me. Right. But I think the biggest thing that young college kids need is a little bit of education when they go pro on how to do finances. So I think they should be given a financial advisor uh, for free at the cost of the school because that's part of the profit margin, Right. And that financial advisor should take the caps out, the cap that they make from pay to play, and show them how to invest it, show them how to manage it. You know what I mean? Enough where it's like, you did get free school, but thank you also for the $9 million you guys made right. you know, this afternoon. But it's like, I think they should be able to get a reasonable transport piece of transportation. A lot of these kids don't have cars anyway. It's like, give them, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying they should have Bentleys and fucking, but I think they should get a reasonable car to drive around with, some spending money and rent money and food money. So... Their focus is just sports, not on getting a secondary job, which is a which is a, definitely a part of it. Yeah. Otherwise, someone is loaning them the money. The shady thing the NCAA is like, we don't want them involved in money, right. yet they have boosters lining their fucking pockets illegally. But, but your uncle can't give you a PlayStation game. No, hell know, no. Right? No, what you doing, man? Right. Can't be right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what's so fucking shady. That to, to be very honest, to be very blunt about it, it all comes down to this, man. That's it's it. all fucking, that's it's all it. this. It's just old white men wanting that's to be it. like, don't you better not pay them, dude. Yeah. Once you pay them, you it's know over. what'll happen. It's over. It's it's over. Yeah. He'll get out there. They'll be fucking running the town up. Spend Georgetown will be winning them back to back. <laughs> we can't have the Hoyas doing that now, do we? Can we now? That SEC shit, you know? It's a secret old cult, man. It's just an old cult. It's just an old cult. It's just, it just reminds me of so many other things. Like the family. If you never saw family on Netflix, watch that shit. The, the amount of religious influence in politics that just... That, <sighs> dude, it's all the same. It's all part of the same fucking cycle. So I just I did a lot of uh, ingesting of stuff like that over the holidays because we got into family, got into one of these uh, half political, half religious discussions, and the old bag checked out. She doesn't want to get involved in that. <laughs> I usually check the fuck out yeah. too because I'm not. It's not even my. It's my. It's my wife's family. I'm like I'm good. I'm not getting into this bullshit. Right. You know I don't want this fucking beef. I'm trying to have a few of these and go to bed. But it was quite balanced to be honest. But the truth is, you do see how passionate people are about what they believe in. And at the end of the day, people can't believe they you don't believe what they believe. And that's what starts arguments, wars, War, fights. Yes. I mean, it just it's a microcosm. So that's why the pay to play thing will never be uh, it'll it'll be a never ending debate. It's because it comes down to politics, yeah, you know, religion, sports. I mean, all these things are just this intertwined beast, this dirty monster. I do think they should pay those fucking kids. I, think, I just I think, think they need to set, like, yes, there's a cap and a Gotta range, a cap. and this is what you get. Sure. There I, has I, that's, to be some money. There. And, and also, then then it also sets them up to start learning how to spend fucking money. I mean, holy shit, dude. You're talking about going from, as a college kid, with a day, with a job, a side gig, you know, making a couple grand a year, you right. know, whatever. To, to then, millions. To then millions? Yeah. I mean, how, what, how wouldn't that be a bad thing? Right. That's a bad thing, dude. Do you remember Hard Knocks? Oh, yeah, I love Hard Knocks. All right, so the first one they did was uh, the Ravens. This right. was right after we yeah. won the Super Bowl. I remember it. And they, I remember they did have a woman come in, and she she talked to... There were different people, and I think one lady talked to them about, about financial management and mm -hmm. said that, like, you are about to have millions of dollars, and you think it's going to last forever. And I'm telling you, you're 23. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Yeah. And your career might be over after this year if you break your leg, and all that's gone. Right. And then what do you fucking do? They also had a woman come in and teach them about female predators, which I was really blown away by. About about women that are looking to, to yeah. yeah trap to, them to yeah. you know baby daddy. Them. Tell the feminist movement about that. See what yeah. they fucking. They, she was telling. Them. That's not real. She's like, yeah. you need to be careful where you go, who you associate Fuck with. Yes. You know all that stuff. Fuck yes. You know, watch your drinks. All these kinds of things too. Um, female uh, predators. That's the name of my next like, album, by the way. They <laughs> they are they are. You know, they attack you in a different way. They're not going to physically assault you, <laughs> right. but they're definitely going to try to entrap you yes, with the pussy. That's it. They entrap me that's with the it. pussy. That's it. Entrap you yeah, with they, the pussy. Yeah, I mean, that's a, re that's a real thing. Whether or not people even want to talk about it, it's just one of those things that's like the amount of women that try to fucking trap athletes because they know that's a great way to, if they get knocked up, then they got a kid. Even if it doesn't work out, I got a paycheck for this kid. It's nuts. Done. That and shit and is if nuts. I'm lucky, I could live off that. Fuck yeah. People think because you're a woman that you're devoid of being a bad person. That annoys me the most. 
that's the you know yeah, what? Yeah. You're you also, are not. Yeah, that's you're why not. Y'all lead in heart attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Women are just as bad as men. We are we are all people are bad. There people. are good people and bad people. That's it. We're we're all mixed in the fucking we're all together in this thing. I, I just don't I just think that that's a real ass thing. What's his name, Mom? Look, inherently I do believe women are absolutely better than men. The good women, I believe, are even better, better than, than the good, good men. men. Yeah, that's probably true. I believe that's, that. But I believe there that. are some bad women but there are in this some motherfucker. Shitty fucking women. <laughs> yeah, there's some shitty dudes and some shitty women. <laughs> some shitty dudes. Don't even don't forget. Women, yeah. Wait, that's like what's his name from Hard Knocks? Who had like thirteen kit, twelve kit? He can't remember him. Yeah, uh, uh, Revis. Yeah, Dur- no, 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 no Cromartie. Uh, Cromartie. Yeah, Antonio yeah. Cromartie. Yeah, he had. Uh, 12 kids with with 10 different women or something. My favorite thing was he's naming off the kids and he goes, he's like, he goes, Darius, Damar, well, which one? I don't know which one came. And and at some point he goes, he's six, he's six, and the other one almost six. (laughs) It's like... Dude, he was, but he had this motherfucker had super sperm. I mean, it, it was. I mean, legitimately, I think it was six different women. Or That's something the like other that. thing, though. You think you're going to get this athlete, and you're going to have a, ba- and then you're like, how many? Wait, he's got nine more kids now. Yeah, your your cut's getting smaller. Yeah, your cut's getting yeah, smaller. Yeah, you better go lock it down. Yeah, you better right. go try to sneak in there. That's yeah. yeah they're, they're, you're dwindling that whole fucking thing. That's a that is a uh, that's a thing you see in athletes that never ceases to amaze me is how many times they're willing. I've said this before on this podcast. I'll say it again. If I ever was a manager or an owner, a GM of a sports team, I would have in my fucking contract, in my contract, that says, if you try to get married while you're on my team, you're, you're, you're off. out. Derek <laughs> Jeter did it the right way. Yeah, dude. Derek Jeter did you, it the right way. You go way. float around, do what you got to do, put a bag on it, pull it out, do whatever you got to do. Do not try to get in this weird marriage. Rela- mar- I feel like when get married athletes, when you're 35, when you're done, yep. when, when you retire done. at 32. That's, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yep. It always blows yeah. my mind when they get fucking married young, get tied up, and then what happens is they're married, then they're on the road, and they get pussy on the road and something, and you know all these. It, it just you see a windfall of of a career flush. It's what happened to Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods should have been a bachelor. Why can't you be a bachelor golfer? He should have been a bachelor golfer his whole life. You know, pussy ruined Tiger Woods. Pussy ruined the best ruined. golfer of all time. Yep, yeah, did. yeah, ruined. Now he's back though. He's kicking ass. It's just still, I still got to be a hard label to scratch. You know what I mean? <laughs> Think about every girl he dates and just hangs out with. She's like, so how many was it? <laughs> like, it's got to be in the back of her head. It's how, how many bitches you fucking right be now? He's like, I'm changed. I'm changed. I'm changed. <laughs> you hear his phone, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the time, <laughs> buzzing, yeah. dinging. Yeah, I'm a changed man, um, dude. I love you. I'm so happy that you came through. This yeah, is fucking incredible. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, we're going to put everything down below uh, in the description, ryansickler.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, please listen to the Honeydew podcast. You can grab that on uh, the Your Mom's House Network. Also, we'll put that in the description, but if you're dumb, you don't know how to figure that out. It always amazes me when somebody's like, how can I find out what cities you're going to? I'm like, my website. <laughs> If you just typed in, ah! m- type in my name and tour, or yeah. or like tickets, or it's like when people ask that stuff, I'm always like, how do you not? That's not that. This is the easiest thing. I think people want it so easy. You're like, yeah. it's it already is. Like, what do you want me to fucking call, call you with dates? Call. I'm gonna call you personally. I go, hey Dan. Here's what show can we make? Listen, I'm coming <laughs> to Baltimore on June eighth. Yeah. Um, you can't make the eighth. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me, let me change it. Hold on. One the ninth. <laughs> Go to ryansigler.com. Uh, listen to his podcast. It's incredible. I did it a couple months ago. Uh, you always have phenomenal guests. The Honey Diz Zoo with a great intro. Sexy woman's voice. Whose voice is that? That's Carlotta Wood. That's a sexy it's one voice. one of the first friends I made when I worked at this hotel back in the day. And I told her, I had her come on and do an episode because her story is amazing. And she's not in the industry or anything like that. Just a just a regular a good old human. good human. And um she worked PBX. She worked the phones at this hotel, and it was a Beverly Hills hotel, so we're all dressed up and shit. And I, I told her, I heard her voice before I saw her, and I was already like, Pff. And I told her back then, yeah, she had a nice 20 voice. years ago, 21 years ago, I'm going to use you in something someday, I promise you. And we've, we, it'd be five, six years, then we'd connect, hello, a little bit, whatever, a couple years, hello, a little bit. And then when I had this, I called her, I'm like... I'm ready to pay that fucking debt back. That's great. Yeah. Carlotta Woods. Carlotta Wood. Wood. Just one wood. <laughs> Just one <laughs> wood, baby. Like, it's not Tiger Woods. <laughs> it's Carlotta, Carlotta Wood. Wood. Shout out to Carlotta Wood. Shout out to Ryan Sickler. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having me, bro. Uh, I love you, man. What I do is I'm going to walk away. You get to say one word or one phrase directly into the camera, okay, to end us. Oh, damn it. Cacahuates.
In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers 